Welcome back, everyone, to the Magic of Numbers um, uh, after the brief break. So in the last part of lecture, we invented subtraction and the number line. And we talked a little bit about like sort of weird ways you can invent the number line as well. But we're going to skip that for now, and we're going to come back to that about halfway through the semester. So, but today, or I mean, sorry, in this part of lecture, we're going to talk about, uh, well, the next op operation. So we've invented addition and subtraction. So, well, what's next? Well, let's invent multiplication instead. And there are several different ways of understanding this, so we're going to explain in a couple different ways. So the most basic one, and probably the one you heard of originally in school, is that multiplication is just repeated addition. And this will be a theme that you, say, you see a number of times, that uh, if you take some operation and you repeat it some number of times, then that gives you some new operation that's helpful to write down. So say we want to count how many objects if we have four pairs of circles. So let's say, uh, well, we have one pair, so that's one, two. Uh, we have another pair, uh, that's three, four. And we have another pair, that's five, six. Oh, and we have another pair, that's seven, eight. Okay, so great. So we simply drew them all out and counted. And now we, well, know how many uh, circles there are. There are eight. If we have four pairs of circles, that means we have eight. But now, for the purpose of this class, we're all mathematicians here, including every single one of you. Uh, and so we already invented addition. So we don't need to count everything. We can just add two repeatedly and forget about the fact that they're circles. So uh, instead, what we can do is we can just do, well, two plus two plus two plus two. And we do this four times. And when we do this, well, uh, I'm going to skip a couple steps and just say that this is equal to eight. And the reason for that is because, uh, well, you, this is actually, if you want to do it like the way we've defined it using our addition tables, you have 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 plus 2 plus 2 uh, is equal to 6 plus 2 is equal to 8. Okay, and this operation turns out to be super useful. It turns out that often you want to count um, adding some number repeatedly. So we give it a name, uh, we've, we've decided to name this thing multiplication, and we denote it using a time symbol. Um, or sometimes you'll see people, oh, sorry. Uh, or sometimes you see it as the, the time symbol across, or sometimes you see it as just the dot. And so they both mean multiplication. Um, depending on the setting, I might use one or the other. So just keep in mind that they both mean the same thing. Really, you could use any symbol you wanted to. It's just convention that mathematicians have settled on these two symbols. So uh, like with addition and subtraction, you can turn this into a table. Many of you have probably seen this table before. You were probably forced to memorize it back in grade school. So uh, let's, only do, let's only do it for the positive numbers for now. Um, because for the positive numbers, uh, this is a little bit easier to write out. So let's say the 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 3, 4, 4, 6, 8. 6, 9, 12, 8, 12, 16. So you might ask, of course, how did we come up with this table? Well, all we had to do is we just had to add things together. So uh, let's say for this particular, uh, no, let's not actually do that one. That one's not, that one's boring. Everything times one is boring um, because it just gives you the same thing. But if, for example, you want two times three, well, there are a couple ways of you, you can think of that. One of those is, let's say you have three groups of two pairs of circles. Or sorry, three groups of pairs of circles, or maybe two groups of triples of circles, and you count those, and every time you always get six, and this is because it turns out that two plus two plus two is equal to six, and three plus three is equal to six. Okay, so far so good. Um, this is a multiplication table. You guys learned this in grade school and probably memorized it for zero through um, nine. Uh, but now, Remember that negative numbers, uh, these things, uh, it took humans a long time to either invent or discover them, depending on whether you believe that math is invented by humans or discovered by humans. Um, so negative numbers were invented around 202 uh, BCE. When do you think multiplication was invented? And so for those of you who are history majors, this is a little bit uh, of a giveaway because I've already told you that um, uh, I accidentally I included the, oh, let me reset my chat before you guys vote. Um, because I've already sort of given away which civilization uh, this uh, picture is from. But, so, 
Um, but not everyone's a history major, so uh, when do you guys guess that neg uh, when was multiplication invented? Okay, so a lot of people are guessing B, uh, since that's around when negative numbers were invented. Uh, a few people are guessing uh, A and C. Okay, so it seems like people think that multiplication is pretty old, right? Um, it turns out that, uh, but people aren't sure if it's older or about the same time as negative numbers. Uh, let's see, oh, we have one person who thinks that they were invented super recently in the 1800s. Um, Okay, we actually have a decent number of people who are um, guessing A. And that might be because I uh, sort of gave away the punchline, which is that this is a Babylonian times table. Um, and it turns out that these sorts of times tables, um, uh, so for the record, um, this is a 10 times table, which is a little bit weird because uh, this is basically saying everything multiplied by 10, and that's because the Babylonians use something called base 60. So instead of counting up 0 through 9 and then going to 10, they would count up 0 through 59 and then go to the next number, which would be one more uh, digit over. Or not, not digit, uh, one more place over. Digit is the wrong word there. And this was around circa uh, 2000 BCE. So this is around 4,000 years ago. So the ancient Babylonians already had their times tables. This is literally a portion of a times table from... Uh, um, uh, a museum uh, from uh, the ancient Babylonians about 4,000 years ago. So multiplication is actually much, much older than negative numbers. Um, we invented multiplication much earlier, and somehow negative numbers are uh, somehow less obvious for people to invent than uh, multiplication tables, as uh, is sort of um, given by the sort of history. And so we've actually invented them in slightly the wrong order. So we invented negative numbers first because that made subtraction a little bit easier in some cases. Um, instead of inventing multiplication first, which would have made a little bit more sense historically. <clears throat> yes, yeah, so uh, hopefully no one else is having audio troubles. Yes, the answer is A, so um, before 1000 BCE. So multiplication is super old. Okay, but now, okay, so we've invented multiplication uh, and we have a times table for it. Well, some, what are some of the nice properties you can see? Well, one of the first things you'll see is if you look at this, this has a sort of symmetry, right? So the upper right and the lower left look the same. Um, and this is encoded in something like, uh, this we can encode in something like um, uh, x times y uh, is equal to y times x. So first, remember that we had the property x plus y is equal to y plus x. Um, so that was, if you have two boxes plus four boxes, that's equal to four boxes plus two boxes. And we get the same sort of thing with multiplication. Oh, um, and before you guys vote, do um, you guys remember what this property is called? Um, and I'll keep on going so you guys can vote as you go along. Um, so note that uh, if we have 4 times 2, and when we say the time symbol, we really mean how many times we have it. So this is one time, and then let's say this is another time, and this is another time, and this is another time. Uh, and our question is, is this the same as 2 times Four, and uh, well, the answer to that is well, that's one the one time four, and let's say two time four. And uh, from this sort of visual depiction, you can uh, you should be able to see that uh, it is uh, these are the same, and these will always be the same. You can write out the multiplication table, and you'll see that. But you can also just see it because uh, well, you can just turn it sideways. And you get the same count. Uh, what did people guess? Yes, this is the commutative property. So this is basically saying that the order in which like 2 times 4 is the same as 4 times 2. Um, well, and let's go on to another property. What about this property? So um, x times y times z or x times y times z. So uh, which property is this? And this is also true. Uh, it's a little bit harder to show. It's 
Well, it's easier if we were in person because I could like stack up things on top of each other and show them three dimensions. <clears throat> but let me just show it uh, as is. And uh, one way of seeing this is suppose that we had um, 2 times 3 times 4. So we do 2 times 3 first. So 2 times 3. I'm going to do these as dots. So that's 1 times 2 times 3. And we have 2 times 2 times 3. And we have 3 times 2 times 3. And we have 4 times 2 times 3. Um, alternately, we can do 2 times 3 times 4. And 3 times 4 is uh, 3 times 4. Um, and 2 times that. So another 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And both of these are equal to, um, if we circle these up, we can do this in groups of three, just to make our life easier. Sorry, I've drawn these bigger. Uh, so both of these are equal to eight times three, which is equal to 24. Uh, okay, and let's see. Oh, people are... Ah, okay, so people are a little bit confused about which property this is. Um, so the answer to this is that this is actually the associative property. So which ones you associate together first doesn't matter. So do you want to associate the 3 with the 2 first or the 3 with the 4 first? And it doesn't matter which one you do first, you get the, uh, same, you get the same answer. And if, so the way to imagine, uh, oh, I think I forgot to reset the chat. Oh, that is quite possible. Oh, okay, so a lot of people were still doing, um, yeah. Okay, so apologies for that. Um, oh, for the record, if you give a new answer, it will replace your old answer. So that's the way the chat works. So it doesn't just add to it. <clears throat> but the answer here is it is the associative property. Um, and uh, yeah. And if we were in person, one of the things I would uh, bring in is I would bring in some blocks. And so then you could actually count these because what you can do is if you see, you can sort of, if you're looking on this one here, you can think about stacking one group of three by four on top of the other group of three by four and you take that entire thing and you turn it sideways. Then you can think of that as stacking a two times three, four times. And so somehow it is just a, you can just uh, view it in sort of turning uh, things around uh, the same way you could with the, um, turning the sideways for just a uh, commutative property, um, but it's hard for me to draw because I'm not a good enough visual artist, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, so this is the associative property. But now, uh, well, we haven't really talked about what happens to negative numbers. So now, one way, there are several different ways of seeing what happens to negative numbers. One way is, of course, if you define multiplication as um, repeated uh, as uh, the, as repeated addition, well then you can get that because right because you can just repeat your addition of um, a negative number multiple times. Uh, but what happens when you have a negative number times a negative number? Like how do you repeat a negative number of times? And the answer to that is it's not exactly well defined. But one thing we can do is we can just try to continue the pattern. So if we want to write out a big multiplication table, including the negative numbers, let's say let's start at negative minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Well, let's start with the part we do know. So we know that 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 4, 6, 6, 9. Okay. So that's the part of the number table that we do know. So we know this because uh, that's, um, we can just do repeated um, additions, and that gets us this. But now let's think about what happens as we continue the pattern going upward and to the left to try to fill in this entire table. So for example, if I were to go, let's say this way, what happens as I go up along the third column? Well, in each step, we subtract three, right? So then that means that if we continue going there, we can just keep on subtracting three or adding minus three as we go in that direction. And so we're basically continuing that pattern. And we can do the same thing in the second column and allows us to continue the pattern. 
And this here is just 0, 0, 0, because each step as you go up, you're just adding 0. And you can do the same thing going to the uh, left here. And you get the same thing. So you get minus 3, minus 6, minus 9, uh, minus 2, minus 4, minus 6, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and 0, 0, 0. Okay, and once you've filled in this pattern, well, one of the things you can do is you can be like, well, can we continue the pattern along these to get the numbers in the, uh, for a negative number times a negative number? So the first thing you'll notice is that we've just shown that negative times positive is equal to negative. Well, if we keep on going, let's say we go here, 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 each time you're adding 3, right? So if we keep on going, that's 3, 6, 9. Uh, if we do that same sort of pattern, we get 2, 4, 6, or 1, 2, 3. So what we've done is we've taken the part of the multiplication table that's super obvious, so the positive numbers, and we've extended it by continuing these patterns. Now, whenever you're trying to extend a table in this way, you have to be a little bit careful. Uh, basically, you need to be careful that the, your extensions match up. So, but in this case, it does match up because if you go this way, you also get the same numbers. So um, whichever way you extend, you get the same numbers. And so we can conclude that negative times negative equals positive. Now, you should know that this isn't necessarily the only way of doing this. But it is the most, it is the simplest consistent way of doing it. And so just continuing this pattern is something that um, is the standard way we've defined multiplication by negative numbers. Any questions on that? So there are a number of different ways of thinking about what happens to negative numbers. This is, I think, one of the more intuitive ones. You're just extending the patterns. And that, that will actually be something that I will be doing a little bit more of uh, in the next section. So next week when we start talking about divisibility and like multiples. And so um, there will be, so I have some exercises which I haven't figured out how to do online, so we might not do them, but where I basically ask you guys to do experiments on numbers and then figure out whether, how to continue the pattern. Because that's what mathematicians do, is we spot patterns and then we try to see if those patterns continue on. Okay, so moving on ahead. Uh, so now we've defined addition and we've defined multiplication. How do we combine the two together? What happens if you add two numbers together and then multiply? Well, that shouldn't be too hard, right? So let's say that uh, four times two plus three. Well, what is that? So that's four times two plus three. Um, so, What's 2 plus 3? Well, 2 plus 3 is uh, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. So that's a 2 plus 3, and we can d duplicate this four times, right? So let's say another group of, so a total of four of these. So uh, boxes. Okay, so what we have is we have four times um, that. Um, and another way of writing that is you'll notice that we can also separate it out. So this is also equal to, well, we have the blue boxes, which is 4 times 2 plus 4 times 3. And this is because we can count the number of 4s we add, because we can count the number of 4s we add. So somehow, one thing you could do is you can uh, do the addition, uh, when you have this thing, this gives rise to something that we call the, oh, come on, the distributive property. So if you have x times y plus z, that's equal to x times y plus x times z. Because the multiplication distributes across each of the things that you're adding together in the parentheses. Okay, but now that I've said that, Caution. What happens if you multiply first and then add? Well, let's try it. So what's 4 plus 2 times 3? Well, we know that, so, so well, this is 2 times 3, so uh, let's do the 2 times 3 first. So there's one group of 3, here's another group of 3. 
and let's say we have a group of four over here. So this, on the other hand, is equal to 10, just counting all these things up. Or you can also think of it as 4 plus 6 is equal to 10. And note that there's no comparable rule to this distributive property. You just have to do the multiplication and then do the addition. You can't break it out in the same sort of way. <clears throat> okay, so hopefully that all makes sense. And this is why we have the distributive property for when you multiply by things that are added together, but you don't have any sort of comparable property to when you multiply first and then add. And so summarizing all of these properties together, we have a bunch of addition and multiplication properties. So we have the commutative property. So x plus y is equal to y plus x, or x times y is equal to y times x. So you have one of those for both addition and multiplication. You have the associative property, and you have a version of that for both addition and for multiplication. Um, for some reason, my font seems to be a little bit weird there, but hopefully that's all right. And then you also have the identity property. Um, so we haven't really talked about this explicitly, but you'll notice that we remember that 0 plus x is always equal to x. And if you look back to our multiplication table, uh, actually, let's do the big one with negative numbers, 1 times anything is just that number itself. And this is generally true and also sort of makes sense intuitively, right? If you have one times a group of things, that's the same as just having a group of things. Um, having one pencil is the same as having a pencil. Um, and lastly, we have the distributive property, which allows us to relate together um, the, addi uh, the addition property and the multiplication property. And note that this is the order it has to go in. And there's a reason why when we're doing order of operations, we normally do multiplications first. And it's because, and then we have parentheses for um, when you do addition, when you want, specifically want to do addition first. So make, uh, make sure that you do the stuff in parentheses first. Um, and that's the way I'm writing things out. Okay, so let's have you guys try this out. So I'm going to solve a linear equation, or try to solve a linear equation, and for each of these steps, I'm going, oh, I'm going to ask you what property I've used in order to make this happen, okay? So uh, if you notice uh, on, well, later on when I have uh, more assignments, I'm going to ask you specifically to use some property to do something. And so you need to be able to identify which one is which. So well, let's see. So we have this uh, 5 times x plus 2 minus 1 is equal to x plus 1 minus 5 minus x plus 18. So am I using one of these four properties or am I using none of these properties and using some other fact? So let's start by doing something super simple. 5x plus 2 minus 1 is equal to x plus 1 minus, let's say, x minus 5 plus 18. Uh, let me reset before you guys vote. Oh, I uh, mistyped reset. Okay, so which of these properties are you are you using? Okay, so it looks like we have some mix between B and D. So people think it's either the associative property or the distributive property. But now, what is the uh, so let's go back. What did what is the distributive property? The distributive property is when you're mixing together addition and multiplication. You're doing a multiplication of things that are added together in parentheses. Here, the only thing we changed, the only thing we changed is over here. So all we did there is we switched the order. And so when all you're doing is switching the order, that actually is the associative property. Because you're switching the order in which you do something. <clears throat> so the answer there was actually B. Okay, well, let's keep on going. Um, so let's say that I... Oh, wait, wait, wait. I messed that up totally because I was lo looking at your things. When you switch things around, that's actually the commutative property. Someone, uh, I... So that's actually the commutative property. Ah, so I apologize for that. I don't actually... Um, I looked at the votes and assumed that one of the votes uh, ought to have been correct. Uh, why is that? The commutative property is a plus b is equal to b plus a. So in this case, it's minus 5 minus x is equal to minus x minus 5. So that is actually commutative property, so the real answer there is actually a. Because the associated property is just what order um, you do uh, things in the same, uh, what order you take the parentheses in. 
So the answer to that was actually A. Uh, and I apologize deeply. If you're confused about that, you can just blame me, and hopefully it'll become a little bit more clear. So now let me do another step. 5x plus 2 minus 1 is equal to x plus 1 minus x minus 5 plus 18. So now note that what have I changed? I've changed lat to lat. So which property is lat? So note that what I've done here is I've done um, a plus b plus c is equal to a plus b plus c. So now which of those properties is that over here? Okay, so this actually is the associative property uh, because we're just uh, switching the order of the parentheses. Okay, let's keep on going and hopefully don't make any other silly mistakes. So 5x plus 1, let's say that's equal to um, x plus minus x plus 1 minus 5 plus 18. So what have I changed here? I've changed just the stuff that's in the parentheses and the order of that. So let me reset. So if I change the order of the things that I'm adding together, Okay, yeah, so people have gotten it right this time. So this actually is the commutative property because that's what we did up here. Um, and if we keep on going, uh, let's uh, say 5x plus 2 minus 1 is equal to um, x minus x plus 1 minus 5 plus 18. Okay, I'm going to reset. Uh, and now, <clears throat> what have I done? I have changed the position of the parentheses. So when you change the position of the parentheses, what that is, is that's the associative property over here, where you're changing the position of the parentheses. And so the answer to that is indeed B, as most people have been voting. Okay, uh, okay, so it seems like we're getting a little bit better at this. So now let me do the next step. So uh, let's say 5x plus 2 minus 1 is equal to 0 plus 1 minus 5 plus 18. Uh, and let me reset again before you start voting. <coughs> Okay. So, yeah. So it looks like people uh, all got this one right. Um, oh, actually, wait a moment. Wait, wait, wait. No, uh, people did not get this one right. Looks like everyone is thinking this is the identity property. Uh, because, probably because you saw a zero. But now, the identity pro property just says, says that when you add a zero, you get the same number. This here is actually not any of your properties. This here is none of the above. This is us knowing that subtract, subtracting, uh, yes, so subtracting things is just um, uh, the opposite of addition, and that's not one of these properties, um, but instead the correct answer is indeed E, so none of the above. Okay, well, let's keep on going. 5x plus 2 minus 1 is equal to 1 minus 5 plus 18. And let me reset the chat. So what have I done here? So notice that what I've done is I've replaced 0 plus 1 with just 1. So what I've said is now saying is 0 plus 1 is equal to 1. Is that one of the properties that you guys know? Okay, so now I, I see some people are now a little bit more cautious, but notice that here, this is actually 0 plus x is equal to x, 
So 0 plus 1 equal to 1 is the identity property. So this is the identity. Uh, and uh, let's see. Let's keep on going. So uh, I'm now going to say 5x plus 10 minus 1 is equal to 1 minus 5 plus 18. So which property is this? OK, good. It looks like people do, uh, did get this one. So this is the distributive property because I'm distributing the 5 into the parentheses. OK, let's do another step. So notice I'm doing this very slowly step by step. When you're actually computing these things, you don't have to do it quite as slowly as, as I'm doing unless I explicitly ask you to. But I just want to make sure that everyone knows like what uh, actually I'm doing exactly. So let me reset here. So what did I do here? I changed the order of the parentheses. So if I change the order of the parentheses, um, flat is the associative property. And uh, it looks like people, yep, OK, good. So we're getting the hang of this. And let me do uh, another step. So let's say 5x plus 9 is equal to uh, 14. And let me reset. What property am I using here? Yep, I'm not using any property. So uh, this here is um, none of the above, because all I'm doing now is I'm not using a property to transform it. I'm just saying uh, this is what these things are equal to. Uh, because by addition and subtraction. Okay, and so now I'm going to do 5x is equal to 5. What have I done here? Uh, let me reset. So what property have I used here? So I've subtracted 9 from both sides. Is that one of the properties that um, that we discussed? Okay, so we have a bunch of split votes. Uh, it looks like my hint gave it away a little bit. So yes, this is none of the above. But so what we did here is we subtracted nine from both sides. And the reason we could do this is if you have two things that are equal, then if you do the same thing to those two things, then you'll end up with the same thing. And so this is, again, none of the above. Um, OK, so at this step, uh, unfortunately, we are now stuck. Oh, come on. Where am I? So now we're stuck. Because even though we've managed to convert this linear equation to 5x is equal to 5, we have no idea how to solve that, um, because we haven't invented division yet. Uh, and that will be the topic of the um, next section of today's lecture. Um, and I will go ahead and give you guys another five-minute break right now. Um, so I'll see you back at 1025.